How many of you have heard of Michael Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about Justin Bieber? Yeah. Despacito. Yeah. I know Kelly likes this song. Yeah. So everybody listens to music. Yes. Yeah. So we have all normal people here. <laughs> but uh, did you know that? Uh, According to a recent study done on music, it is found that people who listen to music or perform are 10 times happier compared to those who don't. Yeah. And when music is played, the growth rate of plants increases by 50%. The next thing that I'm going to share is the most shocking of all. Don't believe any of this, it's a lie. I just made that all up. It's a lie, show up. Well, uh, I'm from wow. a small and landlocked country called Bhutan, situated uh, to the north of India and south of China. Uh, people who visited Bhutan say that it's uh, the happiest uh, place on earth, but it's something that you have to confirm by experiencing it, so please visit Bhutan. And uh, in that, uh, in my small country, Every day, I try to make, feel, fe make people feel better through music. I make rap music about uh, social issues and I share my stories. Uh, recently, I released an album in October. And uh, in 2016, I became the first Bhutanese artist to tour the country. And perhaps uh, I am, perhaps I am the most viewed Bhutanese artist on YouTube, and also the most streamed, perhaps like one of the most streamed uh, Bhutanese artists on the internet. But, but don't get carried away by the superlatives I'm using because the population of Bhutan is only eight hundred thousand. <laughs> so internationally, it doesn't make any sense. But. If, if you were there when I was born, when I was born, you would have never thought that I would do any of what I have done. I was born in the Eastern Bhutan in a very remote village called Wuling under Sambujongha district, where there was no electricity, no road, nothing was there. If modernization was the sun, my village would be Pluto. <laughs> yeah. And my, the place where my house was uh, situated was even farther from the main village. This is the main village. This is, my, uh, this is where my house is. Wow. It is separated by two rivers in the middle of the forest. We didn't have any neighbors. So basically, uh, I grew up hanging out in the forest, uh, trying to uh, swim in the uh, river. river and uh, trying to fish. I like to say that I was more of like thousands. <laughs> but my mother saved me from remaining a jungle boy because uh, she decided to move to a more developed place called Dewatan. And when I got to Dewatan, I saw electricity for the first time, roads for the first time, cars for the first time, television for the first time. I thought the people I saw on TV were tiny creatures living somewhere else. <laughs> Until I got to Dewatan, I never knew about my father. And today I know that my mother decided to move to Dewatan because my father was living there in Dewatan with uh, his other two wives. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, my mother decided to uh, separate uh, from my father. Unfortunate because uh, I never got to see my parents together, although they were there. And uh, my mother uh, took the full responsibility of bringing up his, her four children. So we never had enough, she didn't have anything, so we struggled a lot. Uh, uh, she had a very hard time trying to provide uh, for her children to go to school. Many a times I even thought of quitting school. So it was that difficult. And uh, it was fortunate on the other hand because I got to understand about this reali reality about society and life at a very young age. And 
the my struggles related uh, my story to the stories of rapper rappers, and I started to like rap songs. Walk on water. Mm -hmm. And it gave me the motivation that when I grow up, I'll try to do things in order to not let anybody else go through what I've been through when I was a kid in my own little capacity. So I started, uh, you know, uh, voicing out for rights and social costs from my uh, school days itself, but I could do it on a larger scale when I got to uh, university. Uh, in the first year of my university in 2009, I was a part of a small a youth group called uh, Sheriffs of Thinkers and Rationalistic, Rationalistic Society Stars, where we voice for uh, equal rights for girls in the student body in the college. And with the, the majority vote, we were able to change the 21-year-old constitution of the student governing body in our college. And we had equal position, equal opportunity for girls in the college uh, student body. And later on, I was fortunate to be elected the president of the college. And when I became the president of the college, I got more opportunities uh, and I found out uh, more avenues where my need, I mean like where there's, there was need for more social service to be done. I worked in collaboration with a school for uh, children with disabilities and I uh, helped in raising funds and I had a college band uh, with which I helped raise funds. We even released an album and uh, the, all the money that we made through the album was given for charity. And in, after graduation in 2012, I was once again elected as the chief counselor in the National Graduates Orientation of 2012. Ooh. Then also I did some waste management related projects. And after the uh, orientation, I uh, partnered with a non-profit organization with which I toured the country and raised awareness on uh, dignity of labor with the program called Fashion Show for Dignity of Labor. So that's me, taking the drains away wow. and done. And in 2014, I became a part of a youth initiative uh, where, I, uh, where we uh, created awareness on several uh, issues like social inclusiveness of people with disabilities, you know, uh, and establishing a different and independent council for uh, education in Bhutan, like teaching council in Bhutan, and also uh, sensitizing on the importance of supporting local economy. And uh, in 2014, I uh, won a grant from a civil society organization in Bhutan, and I did a waste management project, project in my hometown. And uh, based on what I do, a lot of people think uh, uh, different things about me. Some think that I'm a social service, a social servant, social worker. And uh, some think that I'm a teacher because I post a lot of uh, pictures with uh, young kids. And some think I'm an artist because uh, I'm an artist because uh, I make a lot of uh, music. Nice. But I like to call myself jack of all trades. I do all these things, but a lot of people don't know that I have a different full-time job, which is a performance analyst in a corporation in Bhutan. And people who know that I have a job and my job requires a lot of time, they ask me how do I manage time. So what I say is like if you're serious about it, you somehow can manage time. Yeah, true. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I have, they say I have a lot of rules. Like you know, uh, I only uh, go for vegetarian food because I uh, fight for animal rights, and I don't even use any uh, like animal products, including like insect products like silk. I always buy local, and they say like you know I'm just one person. You cannot make any difference. So what I tell them is like, all the greatest revolutions in the world started with an idea of one person. 